Roots of the Great Silk Road. Long time ago, caravans were crossing over the valleys of Sirdaria and Talas, a recent Chu, through cities of the Great Steppe, large and small. Southern Kazakhstan was one of the liveliest trips of the main trade route of the medieval times. The Silk Road was stimulating the development of urban centers. Medieval towns were crowded with various people speaking in numerous languages. Different religions and civilizations, cultures of the East and the West, would meet here and coexist peacefully. Last year, a part of the Great Silk Road was included into UNESCO World Heritage List. From China, it went through Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, Tianshan Strip. And eight objects that were labeling the Great Silk Road, cities. We may definitely say that those were full-fledged cities which were involved in international trade, had local production and diplomatic relationships, were centers of some kinds of states. Medieval Taras, city of merchants, was considered as main gates of the Silk Road in western direction. There were up to 20 trading courtyards built around Taras, caravans arrays, which encircled Shutalas Valley like a ring. The only caravan array that survived to our days is Tortkol. We do not know the original name of the city. Tortkol is a recent name established among the people. One of the meanings of this name is connected to its planning. There were four towers, one at each corner, and they would highlight the four sides of the rectangle. Tortkol means four corners in Kazakh. Caravan Saray functioned well during several centuries. It was founded during the 10th century and was demolished based on archaeologists' assumptions somewhere in past Mongolian times in the course of internecine feuds. There's been a total reconstruction of the caravan Saray nowadays. Totkol is a museum complex, medieval caravan Saray of the ancient Taras, which is located in three kilometers distance from the modern regional center. Taras is a kind of agglomeration. We do not call it a city, but agglomeration. It's one of the greatest cities of the region, including settlements around it as well. It was surrounded by high clay walls that were meant to protect crops, farmers and irrigation systems. And here was Tortkol. It stood a little bit farther from the city walls, but still was included into this Taras agglomeration. Caravan Sarais stood not only along the Silk Road, in between cities, but within cities as well. There were such caravan Sarais that played the role of contemporary shopping malls. For instance, tradesmen from Baghdad, Ispijab or Isfahan would build a house and reside there. Other tradesmen would come, sell their goods, make some deals. These kinds of economic activities were held there. Archaeological works researching Tortkol had started back in the 80s. In 2008, the investigation of this unique object was continued. In the course of excavations, it was detected that caravansaray was a rectangular construction, not too big in terms of an area surrounded by walls. Only a small part of foundation survived until today. Walls were erected from mud bricks. The width could reach four meters. Restorers were able to restore the walls and the main entrance of the caravansaray from the southwestern side. After the restoration, walls turned out little shorter than they were back then, in medieval times. They might have been 10 to 12 meters high. Now it's around 5. Also then, they were using natural construction material, mud bricks. It was the most common material of those times. All of the monuments of our region were built on it. 
Therefore, we also tried to use same materials, which we are able at that distant epoch. What did medieval caravanserai look like? The main purpose of Step Hotel is to provide a shelter and lodging for travelers, support people of trade. Merchants would trade with local settled and nomadic populations, get some rest in caravanserai after the long road heading to the west. To clarify to the white public what is a caravanserai, we use the word camping. In modern Europe, there are specially equipped areas along the roads with all necessities for tourists traveling by car. Medieval caravanserai is the analog of this modern camping site, a place to serve travelers. There were those who would take care of their camels, fix the vehicle, one could exchange the cattle, resell if needed, make deals, that is why it was a center of trade, where life was in full swing. Along the perimeter of caravanserai there were rooms for guests, with sofa, place to sleep, with a small stove to keep the room warm. Traveler was offered essentials, a jug with water, a lamp, dishes for food. This is the central square, as it is called, but there were no excavation works here yet. All constructions are along the perimeter of caravanserai. Storage units were on one side. There was a small dining hall and on the other side living accommodations for guests. Therefore, the central square had an open yard for trade activities. Also, vehicles, camels, cottages could stay here. There are no unique findings during the excavations of caravans arrays. There were no constant lively activities, big-scale handicraft workshops, means urban constructions. Archaeologists usually find things typical for trade yards. In the course of excavations, fragments of dishes, ceramics of Karahanit tiles were found here. Along with these items that indicate the development of trade relationships of this region. Chinese to Gersh Karahanit coins. Life of tradesmen, who were also called adventurers of caravan roads, was not easy. Their road was long. They had to get used to cold, hunger, heat and thirst. Not allowing luxuries during the rest to get easier over periods of deficiencies. The danger of robbery and bandit attacks on caravans was pretty high. But within the territory of caravans array, merchants felt safe. There were caravans array security guards' barracks found during the excavations. Every state through lands of which the tradeways were passing would commit to provide the safety of caravans. Craftsmen, diplomats, ambassadors and travelers were using the caravan roads together with tradesmen. Merchants were not just coming for trade, but to open new countries and known lands to study foreign languages and sciences as well. Caravan arrays were built by wealthy merchants for profit, and as for state treasury, it only benefited it. Merchants were not just bringing unusual goods, they were paying taxes from their dealings. Moreover, there was usually a small mosque on the territory of the caravanserai. Muslim merchants could practice their religious ceremonies. There were some Nestorian Christians among the tradesmen as well. These people, working together with caravans from the west to the east, to China and India, from Byzantium, Rome, they were bringing their culture, religion, and they were provided with necessary facilities and resources. There were oriental bathhouses built on the territory of caravans arrays. The introduction of bathhouses in southern Kazakhstan tracks back to many centuries. The first oriental bathhouses, according to archaeological evidence in Taras, were built in the 10th to 11th centuries. 
One of them was excavated on the territory of Taras city bazaar. Actually, these are considered as hammam baths, meaning these came to us from the ancient Byzantium. These are bathhouse complexes of medieval Kazakhstan, the states of medieval Asia to be more precise. They were separated into several segments. Usually it would be four or five rooms. First one, changing room, second washing room, steam room and one more room for relaxation and medical treatments. Only two rooms were unsealed and studied by archaeologists. The rest of the monument was lost after the construction of a factory building here during the previous century. But even the remains of it, protected by the specialists of Kazakh Archaeological Society, are enough to claim the uniqueness of the monument. Its architecture, construction methods, techniques of heat provision, hot water supply are identical to those of famous Kaliyunus baths of the beginning of the 20th century. And also it is similar to medieval bathhouses we've dig out here in ancient Taras. As far as I know, there are several bathhouses like these excavated by archaeologists. Here in ancient Taras site in Turkestan city in Otrar and Saura. That is, in five to six historical sites of southern Kazakhstan, archaeologists have found such bathhouses. A rental bathhouse of Kaliyunus was restored several years ago by professionals from Kaz Restoration, and now you can see how this monument looked like when the city was still called Aulie Ata. Bathhouse was built by local Taras Aulie patron Kaliyunus Meyusupov in the end of the 19th beginning 20th century. Giant caravan arrays were functioning next to the bathhouse. But unfortunately, during the 60s of the last century, they were completely wrecked and ruined. This is a 10 dome bathhouse, the only old school oriental bathhouse in Kazakhstan. The Kaliyunut bathhouse was built by a guest craftsman from Bukhara. It's a grand architectural construction from burnt bricks. Eastern arches lead ways into ten different rooms. Rooms are decorated with fashioned niches. From here, through the underground canals, the heat would get to steam rooms. From the heated floor, the steam would rise up to the dome. There had to be technological experience, skill of using materials, waterproof mortar that would cover the baths, walls, floors. Water delivery had to be thought through how to heat it as well. There was a whole water distribution system into washing rooms. There were people working at the bathhouse who carried jugs with hot water. Sometimes visitor himself would get water from special windows where water was heated. The secret of the domes is still not uncovered. Some suggest that this form helped to preserve the heat. Others, the dome is an element of ecclesiastical architecture that gives grandeur and adds volume to the place of ablution. In the oriental city, bathhouse was rightfully taking a noticeable spot. From the earliest days, people knew the health benefits of bathing. There are treatises found that describe the effects baths have on health of a person. Avicenna wrote the whole treatise on how baths affect human body. And healing, treatment describes vitriolic solutions, herbal, that were used in bathhouses and baths was second popular place to visit after Mosque. People were going there to talk, to gossip, finish deals, and they could spend their whole day getting rest, some sort of clubhouse of that times. And bathhouses played major role in urban life. Since the earliest days, ancient Taras was one of the major centers of the steppe civilization. Every item of the heritage of the southern Kazakhstan is interesting and unique in its own way. Kazakh restorers and archaeologists have inserted new life into creations of ancient architects so that they may reveal the unknown pages 
of the history of the Great Silk Road.